the United States government and the family of nations, with it official, A. 1782 present, seal of the United States, 4 USCS Sec. 41, and, B. Private and National, Flag of the United States, 4 USCS, CHPT. 1, Sec. 1, is the Aboriginal General and Republican Legitimate and Sovereign of the United States of America, ordained and established, prior to 1787, by the people of the United States, according to the preamble, Constitution for, of the United States of America and the, Law of Nations. This free Republican democracy is not a democratic, GK. Meaning mob rule, whether organized or not, federal government. The CUSA makes no mention of a federal, feudal or lat. FODE, O, R, government management, however, it does authorize and lawfully indicate our, Republican form of government. Art. 4. Sec. 4. CUSA. A.K.A. We, the people, Respublica, of the United States. I.e., a government of the people, for the people and by the people. Our national government is a part of the old federal, confederal father. Lat. Fides and Fiatus, A.K.A., the Confederations, Art. 6. CLS. 1. Our general constitutional three-branch United States government, legislative, judicial and executive are not the federal administrative legislative, judicial, and executive departmental government in the United States general government. Our preamble and constitutional general United States government headed principally by the people. The Congress of the United States, not to be confused with the U.S. Congress, is authorized by and a continuation of the United States in general Congress assembled, a.k.a. The Congress of the United States assembled pursuant to, but not limited to, the Law of Nations, ordained by the Family of Nations. The Law of Nations, Art. 1, Sec. 8 CLS. 10, is superior to what is now known as international law. Simply stated, the Law of Nations is international Muslim, not to be confused with Muslim or Islamic law. See Muslim Law and Customary, Black's Law Dict. Ed. 4-6. Customary common law which comprises the body of the principles and rules of actions, relating to the government and security of persons and property, which derived their authority solely from usages and customs of immemorial antiquity. So ancient, as to be beyond human memory, time out of mind. Or from judgments and decrees of courts recognizing, affirming, and enforcing such usages and customs. The law of nations is said to have been esoterically to have been created by the celestial beings or empire, the gods who laid down the law, rules, for the rulers, i.e., those with the ability to use the square rules, science equals to know, for terrestrial, modern man, or more man out of Afmoriga, Africa and Amoria, i.e., Africa and America over 100,000 years ago. The so-called English common law is the exoteric public name for the mesoteric scholarly term Muslim customary law and the esoteric known only to the select and limited elite. Sen Kawish Mar, Kushmor. I.e., the ancient laws of, for and by the Moor, E.S. The word, Muslim, herein used has very very little, if any, to do with Islamic law of the Quran coming out of Arabia. The law of nations is a divine law of Haq and is in no way religious, for religions come and go but truth is, was and shall last forever. These truths are called maxims of law. The term Muslim refers to Moors, Amorians, and not Muslims. The word Moor, Moor is more than a Maros, Morris, or dark-skinned, spiro-haired person. This word Muslim, Moor is originally rooted in the Maru Hebrew, not to be confused with the Yiddish Hebrew of the Ashkenazi Khazaria passed off as Biblical Hebrew, and has the poetic meaning of brilliant, brilliance, brightness, and even light of the world. Its analytical meaning is to advance in consciousness and conduct or to be more than the masses. A true Muslim or Moor is born and is not a matter of skin color or race association. The Law of Nations reordained and re-established by the amalgamated Moors about 13,000 years ago is now called the Family of Nations. The Family of Nations up until 1914 was headed by the Osman Bey Empire aka Ottoman Empire that extended to the American continent ruled by the aboriginal and sovereign people called Leni Lenape, that is, we, the people, who established the United States of Monaco also pronounced Morocco. The Monocan, Moroccan Empire, in the Family of Nations, consisted of a three-league government, Aronsley called Iroquoian, Algonquin and Sushin, and 17 independent republican states with thousands of counties, towns and even village cities. 
The phrase, family of nations, is codified and in Black's Law Dict. BLD, ed. 7, its definition is a word of art form, constructed to confuse or misguide the average unlearned reader. The phrase, family of nations, is also mentioned in BLD, ed. 46 within the definition of United States. This term has several meanings. It may be merely, completely or wholly, the name of a sovereign occupying the position analogous to that of other sovereigns in the family of nations. And state X rel. Mills v. Dixon, Governor, et al., No. 5260, Supreme Court of Montana, February 10, 1923. The sovereign power of the United States in the family of nations is vested exclusively in the United States government. The United States government under the authority of the 1782 present seal of the United States laid down by the United States in Congress assembled. The Congress of the United States assembled and now, the Congress of the United States, not to be confused with the Unconstitutional Republican and Democratic Party Committee U.S. Congress aka, the Senate and House of Representatives of the United States of America in Congress assembled, became the aboriginal, original and sovereign United States of America at that time. Between 1782 to 1787 the preamble citizen and denizens in compliance with the family of nations, ordained and established, in accordance with the law of nations. The Constitution of the United States of America. From that time until now the preamble and constitutional United States of America has been and is a complete and perfect member of the family of nations. At the end of World War I in 1914, the family of nations was dropped from public sight, however, it still exists and by hawk, is in full force. The so-called Western nation, under the control of the masterful Mamluk administrators from 1914 to 1948 has implemented the control of the public in this modern-day world. The Mamluks, administrative federal government of and in the United States of America, under the authority of the 1934-35, Great Seal of the United States, has esoterically and artfully constructed a mirror United States or an image of our United States government. This duplicate U.S. government was publicly completed with the creation of the United Nations. Keep in mind that the free inhabitant United States of America was in existence prior to 1782 pursuant to the law of nations and that the administrative federal great seal of the United States government between 1934-1938 created the United Nations in 1947-48. If there are two United States in North America, there must be citizens belonging to both governments, that is to say, two different types of citizens. These two types of citizens are called, 1, preamble. We, the people of the United States and, 2, 14th Amendment subject to another's jurisdiction, i.e., 1, constitutional citizens of the United States of America and, 2, amendment U.S. citizens. Originally, the preamble citizen of the United States consisted of Maros and Mulatto complexion people. The phrase, we, the people, translates back to Lenny Lenape, Lenape or the Nappy Head and Spiritual People. The word spiritual comes from the root word Spiro and Spira. The Lenape are also called the original men or grandfathers by the modern mixed Native Americans. Modern Native Americans are just that, modern. They, Native Americans, referred to the Maros Lenape as the old ones, or Anasazi, old enemies. Even though they are our brethren they have a lot to account for because of their speaking with a forked tongue concerning the true account of what occurred in ancient North America. Around 15,000 to 13,000 years ago the Moorish Anasazi Folsom people established the Mound Builder Civilization aka Mississippian culture. The Lenape Indian Moors and the Indo-European Moors having fought against the brutish British Moors in the a. Revolutionary War and b. War of Independence, both called the American Revolution. And having won with the assistance of great and honorable white Caucasian people, decided in accordance with the Lenape Monocan Constitution of the Civilized Nations aka Great Law of Peace, that number slavery shall exist in the United States of America. Therefore, today a preamble citizen of the United States is any individual who declares, proclaims, records and implements their constitutional rights and pledges their allegiance to the original national flag of the United States government, in the family of nations. A preamble citizen of USA has constitutional guaranteed rights, privileges and immunities in accordance to domestic common law or the laws of the United States. These rights and properties are embodied within our fundamental principles in both the national general government and the sovereign republican state governments. The preamble citizenship does not depend on any attachment, adjustment or amendment. 
When one consciously, properly and lawfully claims his, her preamble citizenship, they become the posterity or natural-born citizen of the greatest nation on this planet, i.e. the United States of America belonging to the family of nations. Not only is a preamble citizen of the United States a beneficiary of civil rights, in addition we have human rights, allegiance citizenship and common law jurisdiction. As a preamble free inhabitant citizen you enjoy a quasi-sovereign social status and rank as Hokdar, CBLD, ed. 46, and prior temporary potior jury, to any and all other types of citizenships found within any of the United States of or in the Republic of North America. Our preamble and constitutional citizenship of the United States of America, in the family of nations, was designed and honorably constructed based on the conditions of ancient America, in accordance with the law of nations, prior to 1787 by the Moors of Maros, African and mulatto European ancestry, with the intent and providence of including Caucasian colonial serfs by 1808. Caucasian, white people are not originally a part of the preamble citizenship and the vast majority of them as well as black, brown, red and yellow people are preamble citizens today. The following quote was taken from the Congressional Records, Congressional Globe, 37th Congress, 2nd Session, 1862-64, A. April 11, 1862 and, B, hash 1643 and 1002. 1. But sir, if the right to elective franchise is to be the test of citizenship, I beg the gentleman to remember that when this constitution was ordained and established, see preamble to USCA, under which we legislate, it was ordained and established through the suffrage, elective franchise, right of a qualified voter opposed to a registered voter, of persons of African, Maro's hue, as well as of European, mulatto, descent, ancestry but not nativity, i.e. non-natives of Africa and Europe in the majority of the states of the republic. They, Moorish Maros Africans, assisted in the elections of the very persons through whose agency the Constitution of, for the United States of America, was finally ratified. Look at the records of North Carolina for information on this subject, look into the legislative records of Maryland and Delaware, and look at the records of the New England states, and you will find that the persons of African descent, Negro de Terra, did enjoy the elective franchise, e.g. education, property, money and preamble citizenship, and had a voice, viva voice, being present, in the adoption of your constitution. To this day they hold and enjoy that right in several states of the republic. You cannot as FERDERAL, now administrative federal government of and in the USA, legislators, prevent the exercise of this right by the colored, femme color libre, CBLD, ed. 46, citizen, you cannot help it. The reader must bear in mind that the continent we now call America for at least a hundred thousand years has always been inhabited by different ranks and complexions of people and about thirteen thousand years ago, during earth changes. A Moorish amalgamated Maros mulatto people arose that did not see all other people as fellow human beings, nor true man. From those ashes until 1914 primarily and 1898 secondarily, Moorish copper, coffee and mulatto complexion people ruled in America. William Penn and the settlers of 1863 styled the Moors Indians as black as gypsies or blackamoors and named them as aristocracy, oligarchrosy, i.e., the kings, queens and dukes of North America, see Ancient and Modern Britain by David Mac Ritchie. The Aboriginal American Moors of African ancestry were the original free inhabitants of the United States prior to 1787 and during the construction, ordination, establishment and implementation of the United States government, in the family of nations, and the Constitution of the United States of America as indicated in the Congressional Globe, records of 1862-64. Contrary to public and popular opinion, black people or anyone else for that matter, were not truly freed by the Emancipation Proclamation. 1. Mr. Cradlebaugh, Speaker. I move to amend the first section, so as to make it apply to persons of Anglo-Saxon race. I think we ought to have some consideration and regard for those white persons who are enslaved, in the union where white slavery exists, to which the system of African slavery, those of African nativity, in the District of Columbia bear no comparison. Mr. Cradlebaugh's amendment was rejected. The English. English Caucasians of Europe have historically been present in North America around 1609 and up to 1854, and even to now, if you are a white, O.N. blacker, person you are, for the most part, a well-kept slave. The vast majority of the U.S. citizens are 13th and 14th voluntary common law contracted white Negro. The 13th Amendment to the Constitution of the United States of America, Preamble and Article 17, 
is an inferior appendage thereof and does not in any way supersede the CUSA nor does it have anything to do with the preamble and natural born citizens of the USA. It is an artificial attached and constructed amendment quasi outlawing slavery, the original serf Caucasian white, white person, the original Slavs, slaves, and involuntary servitude. Moros and mulatto hued people forced into bondage, i.e., they didn't volunteer to be forced into slavery. Most people, when they read the 13th Amendment only recognize that one can be forced into slavery or involuntary servitude for the punishment of a crime, however, one can voluntarily make themselves and their offspring slaves by way of common law contracts. This is why the 13th Amendment omits the term, neither voluntary slavery nor voluntary servitude shall exist within the United States. The 13th Amendment sets up conditions for 14th Amendment citizenship and legally and artfully allows for voluntary subjugation of the 14th Amendment, et al. The 14th Amendment citizenship is predicated on the word of art term, subject to the jurisdiction. The phrase, subject to, comes from the Latin terms servio and service, meaning to be a slave or to be mortgaged. Also in lawyer's Latin, the idiomatic word of art term, subject to the jurisdiction, of another means negro. My major mentor and principal earthly teacher is the dearly departed Timothy Drew or more affectionately and powerfully known as Noble Drew Ali, a Chesa prophet, not to be confused with the biblical Nabi prophets and Quran Rasul, messenger, of North America who initiated, in this cycle, a national and divine movement in and of North America to resurrect, and completely and perfectly recover, the free republic of the United States of America, in the family of nations, and the constitutional citizens thereof, whose allegiance is to the official red, white and blue of their forefathers. Unfortunately, the overwhelming majority of people, who lay claim of following him as the prophet, seem to have ignored, forgot or totally misunderstood his teachings and mission. The 8% is an indefinite number. This American-born and Chaza prophet told us not to call ourselves black, negro, etc. because certain words lawfully delude to slavery and spiritually to subhuman or subconscious behavior. Words have power. Power has the ability to move things, and things that move, can be moved in either a positive or negative direction. Therefore, negative words have the nature and ability to move the masses in a negative or harmful direction. The term Negro is rooted in the trilateral Senzar word NGR and means to fall down or to be defeated in battle. These meanings simply translate into someone's property or property. Around 13,000 years ago, one of the ancestral lines of humanity from which the YNG, English Caucasian people genetically descended from was totally and fully defeated by Maros amalgamated Moors, who claimed them as Negroes or property and named them Slavs and Serfs, Serfs, which has come down to us to be called slaves. Also, those amalgamated Maori Moors did not see their fellow human beings and brethren as a man but as a creature or thing, and this is in part where the term white or white comes from. The term white additionally comes from wit, white and black. The word black and white modernly can be traced back primarily to the Old Norse word blacker and secondarily to the Middle English black, black. Black represents a consciousness that can't see anything or non-understanding and white represents a consciousness that there is nothing to see or that, which ignores. This particular meaning of blacker, black-white cannot be truly comprehended by anyone who refers to himself or herself as a color, especially if you're black or white. Unknowingly, today, when people refer to themselves as either black, brown, red, yellow or white, they are identifying themselves as a color, and the word of art item color in law means a deceptive appearance as distinguished from that which is real, counterfeit, feigned and having the appearance of truth, see color and colorable BLD, ed. 4-6. All 14th Amendment citizens of the United States are subject to the jurisdiction thereof aka a Negro equals property, i.e., a natural resource regardless of what color you are. As history has shown, the Europeans who were allies with us Moors fell to the devices of the settlers who through bloodshed, created the conditions which left our government in distress and which caused us to leave Congress, in sine die, meaning without setting a day to return, convene Congress. Since this time, the European settler families have taken control of the government established by our ancestors and have turned this country in one divided by race. Little are they aware that they are being guided by an agenda of a people who do not even care for them. An agenda that seeks to control all of humanity from one corporation of which these families created. They have separated the people into colors, property to be owned by them via contracts. Note, A corporation cannot contract with a natural-born human, a legal fiction had to be created at birth or beyond and convince you that you are the legal fiction created. 
It is not a corporation that sues the flesh and blood man, woman, as I stated before, it cannot do that, but the representative of this legal fiction who, by tort, sues you in the name of the corporation, as the corporation itself is just a piece of paper. The administrators seek to rule the world via corporations and the masses have fallen for it. The brutish Moors who practiced slavery in Europe, came to the Americas with their white Slavs and attempted to keep their practice going here in America. We, the Moors of America, opposed the institution of slavery of which our British brothers saw as just. After the rise of settler violence against the Moors Indians, a lot of Moors sided with the British, Moors, and joined their ranks to impose slavery upon its subjects for the treatments they were receiving. This is what the Civil War was about, slavery. A war between the Moors of America and Europe, with the help of our American brothers of the European persuasion, friends of our people. The lie is that the Americans won the Civil War, when in fact, they lost. The British Crown still holds dominion over its subjects here in America. But, there are still those who seek to honor the Constitution, although they do not know of its origins. They see it as only pertaining to them, Europeans, of which all but a portion of white society have used to oppress their once united brothers. White supremacy was introduced to the minds of the people of the world, as they could not overcome the fact that the ruling classes of nations were people of a darker hue. To this end, they created institutions to assert white superiority over their once loved dark-skinned friends and neighbors. While there were Moors who did practice barbarity upon others, the tribal Moors of America knew not to accept this way as it was against the Creator, as it would lead to misery for all. This is why the Iroquois Confederacy was born, as the native peoples of America had practiced this form of self-governance of a constitutional form for centuries before and peace was abound in all the lands. It is time for a new beginning. It is time for peace. Unity is the way, tolerance are the steps.